This presentation is a part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given at the bottom of this slide. In what follows, we're going to talk about the language feature of C++ known as classes, which are essentially user-defined types. As we know from earlier, the C++ programming language provides a number of fundamental types, uh, such as the integral types and floating point types. These types are very simplistic though, and for this reason the language provides a mechanism for defining new user-defined types. So an example of a user-defined type in C++ is what's known as a class. And a class specifies essentially two things. Uh, first, how objects of the class are represented, in other words, the underlying state or data that's associated with the class objects. And also it specifies the operations that can be performed on objects of the class. Now, not all parts of the class are directly accessible to all code, and I want to introduce a few terms that relate to this notion here. The first is the notion of an interface, and the interface is the part of the class that's directly accessible to its users. So, for example, if you had a random number generator class, part of the interface would probably be an operation that says, give me the next random number in the random number sequence that's produced by this random number generator. In order to do its work, the, the function that computes the next random number is going to you know, implement some algorithm which relies on some internal state in the random number generator class. And this internal state would be part of the implementation of the class. It's something that the, user of the users of the class don't see directly. They can only access it indirectly through the interface. So they would call a function that says, get the next random number. And then the code inside this function is going to access an, a, a bunch of internal state inside the random number generator class object in order to do its job. And this internal part of the class is what's referred to as the implementation.